All right, guys, let's go over that standardized signal assignment that I gave you guys. Uh, so there's a number of different analog signals that are out there in industry. One would be the current signal, so they use a 4 to 20 milliamp current in order to send this 0 to 100%. Uh, voltages, there's a whole whack of different voltages out there, 0 to 5, 1 to 5. There's also 0 to 10 volts that's used a lot. And if you need to use a pressure signal to open and close the valve, you'd use 3 to 15 PSI. So let's see if we can get our heads around this chart and the percentages and how they relate to each of these signals. So we got 4 to 20 milliamps. So obviously the lowest value is 4 milliamps. And the highest value is going to be represented by 20 milliamps. And if we go across there, then the highest portion of the range, 5 volts, 5 volts here as well, and 15 psi would correspond to 800%. 100% of the level in the tank, or if you wanted to crack that valve open 100%, you could send it 15 psi. The lowest value is obviously here, zero volts DC. This guy has an elevated zero of one volt DC, and this guy has an elevated zero of three psi. So the reason why they have the elevated zero of four milliamps or one volt or three psi is just so you can see the difference between whether you actually have power or whether you've lost power. So it's a way to monitor the circuit. So we've got a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, but this 4 milliamps has been bumped up. You can see how I've taken the between 4 and 20, there's 16 equal values. So they've taken the 4 to 20, but it's the same as the 0 to 16 range. So if you try and find the percentage here, 50% of your 20 milliamps, you're going to get 10 milliamps, which is not 50% of that range. So what you have to do is you have to bump everything down by 4. Right? So here we have an equal amount of increments of 16. Right? So take 50% here, and if we take 50% of the 0 to 16 range, then that looks like that would be 8 milliamps. So on the 0 to 16 range, you have 8 milliamps. And it looks like everything bumps up by 4. 16 goes to 20, 0 goes to 4. So with this 8, we're going to add 4 more on. And we've got 12 milliamps corresponding to 50%. So we'll punch that onto our chart here. Okay. If we want to look at 25%, then we'll take, again, 0 0.25 times 16, and that ends up giving us 4 milliamps. So on the 0 to 16 range, you end up with 4 milliamps. Now everything bumps up by 4 again, right? So that 4 milliamps ends up being 8 milliamps, corresponding to 25%. So we'll throw that here. Now it looks like everything goes up by 4, so we got 4, 8, 12. This guy is most likely 16 milliamps. Right? Again, we could do, <clears throat> instead of the 0.25, take the 0 0.75, multiply that by your 0 to 16 range, and that ends up giving you 12 milliamps. So 75% of this range gives us 12 milliamps on the 0 to 16 range, and we're just taking this whole range here and bumping it up by 4. Right, so we got 4 here, 8, 12, so this guy ends up being at 75%, 16 milliamps. Right, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20 milliamps. Following that, if we wanted to find the 10, the 33, the 67, and the 78, well, just take 10% of the 0 to 16 range, and that gives you 1.6 million. So if we've got 10%, let's draw that on here, and we move that up here, ends up being 1.6 million. When we take that range and move it up by 4, we've got to add 4 to this value. So 10% ends up being 5.6 milliamps.
which looks good because we're between the 4 and the 8, between the 0 and the 25%. Okay, for the 33%, again we'll take 33% of 16, and that gives us, what, 5.28? So, 33%, and if we follow that up, that gives us 5.28 milliamps on the 0 to 16. And then again, we've got to add 4, right? So, 33% here is going to give us 9.28. So, the 5.28 plus the 4 to give us 9.28 milliamps. Okay? Keep going, we got 67%, so we're going to take 67 times our 0 to 16 range, and that gives us 10.72. So again, we'll throw in our 67 here. Punch that up here, we get 10.72 milliamps on the 0 to 16. But that's no good because we can't tell whether there's current or there's no current, so we've got to have an elevated 0. So we're going to add 4 to this guy right here. So 67%, 10.72 plus the 4 gives us 14.72 million. Okay, and then finally 78. Well, 75 gave us 16, right? So we'll take 0 0.78 times our 0 to 16 range. And that gives us, what, 12.48? So, 78%, right? Punch that up here, gives you 12.48 milliamps, right? Just above the 12 that we saw for the 75. And then we're going to add 4 to this guy. So, 78% gives us, what, 16.4. 48 milliamps. Right on. Okay, so same thing we can do with the 3 to 15 PSI. Right? Instead of using a 3 to 15, we could change that to a 0 to 12. So all I'm going to do is just erase these percentages here. So instead of this being a 0 to 16, we'll go 0 to 12 now. And instead of this being a current signal, this is going to now be a pressure signal. So we had a 3 to 15 PSI. Right? The reason why they have that 3 PSI is so that they can actually see whether the compressor is still working. So there's our 3 to 15 range. And if we take the percentages and go, you know, 50% to 15, then we're not going to get the right percentage for that 3 to 15 range. So we've got to drop that down to something that references 0. Same as this, 0 to 100%. So if we drop that down to 0, then we take off 3 values. So that's the same as a 0 to 12 range. Right, so between each of these guys, there are 12 equal increments there. And we'll do the same thing. We take 50%, so 0 0.5, times our lower range, the 0 to 12. That gives us 6 PSI. Right, so 50% giving us 6 PSI. Everything on this range gets bumped up by 3, so 0 goes to 3, 12 goes to 15, 6 goes to 9 PSI. So 50% here is actually 9 PSI. If we look at 25%, so we'll take 25% of this range, the 12, And that's going to give us, what, 3 PSI? 
And then this range gets bumped up by 3, right? So we've got 0 0.3, 6.9, 12.15. .9, this 3 PSI that we see on the 0 to 12 is going to correspond to 3 plus 3, 6 PSI on the 3 to 15. So you'll notice that these guys are going up by 3 PSI for every 25%. So we've got 3, 6, 9. This guy is most likely going to be 12 PSI. Right, let's just make sure. So we got 75% times the lower range of 12. That ends up giving us 9 PSI. So 75 giving me 9 PSI in the 0 to 12. And then bump it up by 3. And it ends up giving us 12 PSI on the 3 to 15. Okay. These guys are pretty intuitive. If you're looking at 0 to 5, right, then this is already referencing 0. So if you look at 50%, this is obviously half the voltage, 2.5 volts. 25% of 5 volts is 1.25 volts. And then 75%, these guys are all going up by 1.25. So add another 1.25 here. We get 3.75 volts. These guys are always DC values. Right? You want DC current to DC voltage, so they're always stable values, rather than a sine wave AC that's modular. You want the value to stay exactly the same. Okay? This one from one to five, there are four equal values between those guys. So, if I take 50% of four, that gives me two, plus my elevated zero of one gives me 3 volts DC. And the beauty of this one is that 25% gives me 2 volts. 1, 2, 3. This guy is 4 volts DC. Now for each of these guys, we can go through the same thing. right? If we go to the 3 to 15, and we take the 10%, then we're going to take 0 0.10 times 12, and that ends up giving us 1.2 PSI, right? So 10% giving us 1.2 on the 0 to 12, and then we've got to add 3 there, so that ends up being 4.2 PSI. If 33% looks like it should be just above 3 here, right? And 33% should be between 6 and 9 on the 3 to 15, right? So we take 0 0.33 times the 12. That ends up giving us, what, 3.97? Right, so again, 3.97 corresponding to 33%. And then we bump that up by 3, so 33% gives us 6.97 PSI. Okay, 67, it looks like it's going to land between 6 and 9 on the 0 to 12, and between 9 and 12 on the 3 to 15. So if we take 0 0.67 times 12, that ends up giving us, what, 8.04. And that's on the 0 to 12 range. Right, so again, 67, bring that guy up here, gives us 8.04 PSI. And if we add 3 to that, it gives us 11.04. Okay, finally the 78. 78 should be, what, just about 9 on the 0 to 12, and just about 12 on the 3 to 15. So we'll take 0 0.78 times the 12. That gives us, what, 9.36. Okay, so you get 9.36, easy now, on the 0 to 12. 9.36. Okay, then we've got to add 3 to that guy, so we get 12.36 on the 3 to 15. Okay, 
The other values we'll just throw in there. 10% uh, here is 0 0.5 volts. 33 is 1.65. 67 is 3.35. And because this guy doesn't have an elevated zero, you could just take 0 0.67 times 5. 0.78 times 5. And that gives you 3.9. For all these guys, for the 1 to 5, you're going to take the percentage, multiply it by 4, and add 1. So for the first one, it ends up being 1.4 volts DC. 33% gives us 2.32. And we got 3.68. And at 78%, that should be just above the 4 volts. And that gives you 4. 0.12 volts DC.